I started my career uh, right about the same time that the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom was established back in 1998. So I've seen the network grow from a handful of sites to a true network. And really what this program does is it makes the world, especially in the 19th century, a lot smaller. Um, you're able to find connections between freedom seekers, between abolitionists, between the folks who helped them. And the documenting these histories helps us to contribute to a more inclusive commemorative landscape. I've always been curious about my own cultural identity. Uh, my father is Cape Verdean, which is a group of islands off the west coast of Africa. Um, learning about Cape Verdeans' connections to the New Bedford community and the whaling industry uh, was always fascinating to me and um, something that I started to research in college. Uh, learning more about my mother's side of the family and my French Creole roots, um, I discovered that I descend from enslaved people. So um, the Underground Railroad has always been a fascination of mine. Through my various experiences working with the National Park Service, I've worked with the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom in many ways, um, both to document sites, um, to do programs, document programs, also to do things like develop exhibits so that we can share these stories with the public. So it's not just about documenting the sites and preserving the sites, it's about how we connect the public to these places, to freedom seekers, um, to the stories that these places represent. A few moments really stick out from my time at New Bedford. I would say first and foremost, just being involved with developing an Underground Railroad walking tour. So taking that research, um, both that was conducted by the National Park Service, as well as scholars like Catherine Grover, who really documented the New Bedford story really well. One moment that really sticks out was the Youth Ambassador Program, which was a group that uh, we worked with a local community organization called Third Eye uh, to teach Underground Railroad history to young people. And through hip hop music, they were able to communicate to other young people and their peers through music, through videos, through outreach and events, um, this powerful story of the Underground Railroad. So put your money away and live life in the past today, today, um, discover our own culture, show love. They also were able to uh, produce a documentary and visit Harriet Tubman National, National Park in Maryland where they learned about the Underground Railroad and created a song specifically about the Underground Railroad. I brought my son uh, who was born in Boston, grew up in Boston, and then traveled to different National Park Service sites with us, um, and really didn't have the New Bedford experience that I had. But when I was able to bring him into the downtown area, which when I started was old buildings, um, not a lot of shops and restaurants, you know, now it's just a culturally vibrant place. And that's a direct result of the rich history in that city and the work that we did with community organizations to document this history. Um, but the moment that really sticks out was being able to show my son the 54th mural that is downtown. Um, and I was part of the team that helped to get that mural um, on a building in downtown New Bedford. And to be able to share that with my son and say that I was involved in helping to make that happen was just a really powerful moment. My role is to carry forward lessons learned and best practices and approaches uh, for commemorations and anniversaries in the National Park Service. Uh, right now, that means a lot of my time is being spent preparing for the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. And the connection to the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom is the focus on telling a complete national narrative. Our mission in the National Park Service is to educate and inspire, and we use peer-reviewed scholarship to do that, and we share with the public 
uh, the stories of our nation, we include multiple perspectives and we allow the public to draw their own conclusions. We're going to go beyond just the traditional founding narrative that we're accustomed to and one of the things that the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom does is allows us to give voice to not only freedom seekers who had the courage and the bravery to take those first steps um, to risk it all to gain their freedom, but those who helped them. The National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom allows us to explore the stories and narratives of all freedom seekers and those who assisted them. The exciting thing is we're still learning so much. Um, we're still adding new sites. We're still adding new stories and learning new stories every single year. At, with 25 years of the Network to Freedom operating, uh, we're looking forward to the next 25 years and the stories that we can uncover um, and the sites that we can, we can add to the network to, to be able to tell a more complete and accurate story.